Good afternoon, Dr. Mabunga and classmates. I am Sister Maria Acela B. Chavez, and my report is about CHED's response to COVID-19. The emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic brought unprecedented disruptions in the lives of people all over the world. It came unexpectedly where no one was ready enough to brace its impact to society. The World Health Organization declared the outbreak as a public health emergency of international concern last January 30, 2020, due to the increasing number of cases spreading to various territories and confirmed human-to-human -human transmission. Given this reality, the primordial concern is to avoid and limit the risks of infection. The Herculean challenge then was how to continue teaching and learning beyond the usual face-to-face -face instruction. Thus, the urgent need is to explore other innovative learning modalities that will facilitate migration from traditional to flexible teaching and learning options. As a response, the Commission on Higher Education adopts and promulgates the Guidelines on the Implementation of Flexible Learning, CHED Memorandum Order No. 04, Series of 2020, to be implemented by public and private higher education institutions in accordance with the pertinent provisions of RA 7722, otherwise known as the Higher Education Act of 1994, RA 11469, otherwise known as the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act, and by the virtue of Commission and Bank Resolution Number 412, 2020, Series of 2020. But first, let us define what flexible learning means. It is a pedagogical approach allowing flexibility of time, place, and audience, including but not solely focused on the use of technology. The design and delivery of programs, courses, and learning interventions address learners' unique needs in terms of place, pace, process, and products of learning. It involves the use of digital and non-digital technology and covers both face-to-face -face or in-person learning, out-of-classroom learning modes of delivery, or a combination of modes of delivery. It assures the continuity of inclusive and accessible education when the use of traditional modes of teaching is not feasible, as in the occurrence of national emergencies. In the implementation of flexible learning, higher education institutions shall be guided by the following. Flexible learning is a learner-centered approach that is deeply rooted in the needs of the students. The main objective should be to provide learners with the most flexibility on the learning content, schedules, access, and innovative assessment, making use of digital and non-digital tools. Higher education institutions shall continue to exercise their judgment in the deployment of available flexible learning and other alternative modes of delivery in lieu of in-campus learning or face-to-face -face modality. The exercise of discretion by the higher education institution and their faculty must be reasonable, transparent, and outcomes-based validated. CHED COVID-19 Advisory Number 6. Higher education institutions shall formulate decisions using data-driven and participatory approaches on determining and implementing the most viable form of flexible learning and teachings that they will utilize based on their capability, existing condition, national government agency guidelines, and local government unit advisories. As a sustainability and monitoring mechanism, higher education institutions should submit for information their Learning Continuity Plan, or LCP, to the CHED Regional Offices at the beginning of the academic year 2020 to 2021. It shall reflect the framework and system for the transition and integration of flexible learning approaches and overall absorptive capacity of the higher education institutions to articulate its preparedness and response interventions that reduces disruption of classes and impact of natural calamities, making continuity of learning more resilient. Flexible learning should complement outcomes-based education approach, 
which allows flexibility for the higher education institutions to employ, employ various means of delivery and assessment as long as they can show the achievement of the set learning outcomes for each course or subject for the program. Sixth, in terms of learning content, higher education institutions shall review all their curricular offerings and make the necessary adjust adjustments or modifications in the curricular structures or program of study, considering the prerequisites and co-requisites, determining alternative options in the design, delivery, pedagogy, and assessment, assessment mechanisms that can be delivered to the students through various modalities. The higher education institution's implementation of its flexible learning strategy must be anchored with their institutional objectives, which is to produce graduates who are globally competitive, locally responsive, innovative, and technologically driven. Seventh, on the management of learners, higher education institutions shall provide mechanisms to inform and orient learners on the learning system to be implemented, which may be in a form of course packages for students and are accessible through offline and online modes. Higher education institutions shall establish means for students and teacher engagement for communication, which may include short message services or SMS, electronic mail or email, online chat, instant messaging, and other means whichever is convenient, appropriate, and available to ensure personalized, effective, efficient, and timely monitoring and feedback mechanisms. Ninth, higher education institutions shall explore establishing linkages with relevant national and local government agencies, civil society organizations, telecommunication companies, professional organizations, international organizations, and other organizations to strengthen and or complement existing resources, infrastructure, or connectivity to ensure undisrupted learning of the students. Tenth, higher education institutions are encouraged to maximize the use of technology to support learning and teaching, which may include the following, determination of the level of technology to be used for the delivery of programs based on connectivity of students, establishment of a multimedia or learning resources, resource centers to provide technical support to faculty members in the development of IT-enabled and IT-mediated instructional materials, access and utilization of electronic library and or available open educational resources as reference in various flexible learning pedagogies and disciplinal content, and utilization of a learning management system or LMS, either proprietary or non-proprietary. Eleventh, higher education institutions shall implement or explore grants and or support capacity building programs for administrators, faculty and staff on transitioning to flexible learning Higher education institutions ensure that health and safety protocols are always maintained. Higher education institutions shall also establish means to remind students, teachers, and other school personnel of the health and safety protocols through the display of reminders in conspicuous areas within the school premises. Thirteenth, higher education institutions are encouraged to form consortia coalition or networking to facilitate capacity building programs and sharing of resources. A consortium is a reciprocal and mutually beneficial arrangement among universities that seeks to build on the culture of shared responsibility, expanding inclusivity, promoting quality and empowering capacities in the Philippine higher education system. And lastly, the implementation of flexible learning by higher education institutions for both the undergraduate and graduate programs should still be guided by the principles of outcomes-based education, OBEs, and by applicable PSGs to assure quality of teaching and learning. So for our various modalities in the implementation of the flexible learning and teaching, Okay, under these components, we have technology and content learning materials. 
and then the various modalities like offline, the blended learning. Blended learning is defined as a way of learning that combines traditional classroom lessons with lessons that use computer technology and may be given over the internet. And we also have the online. For the technology, okay, you can see here um, the modalities which can be used for offline, like the use of printed modules, audio tapes, videotapes, CDs, storage devices, learning packets, television or radio broadcasting networks, and LMS. Okay, for the blended learning, we have desktop, computer, laptop, smartphone, mobile applications. If virtual or collaborative learning is to be implemented, LMS must be set up. Printed modules, audio tapes, video tapes, CD storage devices, and learning packets. Television or radio broadcasting networks and learning management system. And for the online, we have desktop, computer, laptop, smartphone, mobile applications, learning packets, and learning management systems. For the content or learning materials under learning objectives for the offline, we can have the printed or electronic modules, video, audio podcasts, webcasts, OERs, in storage devices, OERs, learning modules or materials. And for the blended learning, we can have the printed or electronic modules, video, audio, podcasts, webcasts, OERs, the use of digital platforms or the higher education institutions a learning management system and for the online you can have the electronic modules video audio podcasts webcasts oers mainly the use of internet-based technology modules and the like in the use of digital platform or the schools or the higher education institutions learning management system okay for the evaluation and assessment both um, formative and summative assessment for the online Offline, we can have the proctored non-conventional assessment, performance-based assessment like the portfolio, research papers, video recorded student reports, laboratory reports, project-based or task-based assessment, use of assessment rubrics. For the blended learning, we can have the performance-based assessment like the portfolio, research papers, automated exams with pool, bank of questions, video recorded student reports, laboratory reports, project-based or task-based assessment, use of assessment rubrics, and use of adaptive testing. For the online learners, we can have the performance-based assessment, portfolio, research papers, automated exams with pool or bank of questions, video recorded student reports, laboratory reports, use of assessment rubrics, and use of adaptive testing. For the, under the support services, we have the library, guidance and counseling, student support, health, psychological, technical support for faculty, enrollment and registry, assessments and grade, payment system like the tuition and salary. For the offline learners, use of other delivery options for student services, digital or non-digital, when necessary and appropriate. And for the blended learning, if 50% of program is online, then online library and descriptions, online enrollment, guidance and counseling, online technical support staff help desk, online assessment and grace monitoring, online payment for the tuition and salary. And for the online learning, we can have the online library and subscriptions, online enrollment and curriculum monitoring, guidance and mental and psychological support, technical support, support staff help desk, online assessment and grades monitoring, online payment of tuition and salary. And we can still have the policies on intellectual property rights, open education resources, plagiarism, student attendance, reporting and updating, teaching complement attendance, reporting and updating. And we can also have it for the offline. It must be available. And the blended learning available in printed and electronic copy. And for offline learning, available in electronic copy. And then the sixth component is the overview and orientation guide for students and teachers, which must be available for the offline learners, blended learning through printed and electronic copy, and for the online learners, which must be available in electronic copy. CHED's initiatives. 
So CHED shall implement developmental projects to assist institutions, faculty members, and students transition to flexible learning. CHED shall likewise closely collaborate with its stakeholders and partners to ensure effective teaching and learning outcomes, such as the provision of support services through capacity building trainings, continuous enrichment of the Philippine CHED Connect with diverse open educational resources, grant of financial support or awards for research and materials development subject to availability of funds and specific guidelines, creation of a mechanism for communication between and among CHED stakeholders, review of the curriculum and collaboration with other government and non-government agencies to enhance the use of technology and improve internet connectivity. So for my uh, synthesis and insights, I am grateful for everything that CHED is doing to monitor and help higher education institutions and their stakeholders. They have to be assured that everybody is safe and at the same time, quality education still takes place in spite of the pandemic. They need to be assured that the school is ready for flexible learning. That's why we were asked to submit a learning continuity plan or LCP for the academic year 2020-2021. Last June 2020, CHED Regional Office called for a whole day webinar from different higher education institutions from Region 4A where we belong. It was a capacity building webinar for administrators and professors. Our output is our college department's learning continuity plan as well as the assessment plan. Our college also had a survey where the students were asked what is their preferred modality for flexible learning. We also have our synchronous and asynchronous classes and conscious of our screen time for health reasons. At present, we have already completed our first semester on this pandemic academic year. The college professors and students have already made the necessary adjustments. I can say that as educational leaders, we have to be always ready for whatever might come along our way. We have to be always flexible and resilient too, like a bamboo, and never allowing ourselves to be dampened by the scare of the coronavirus pandemic. We need to always learn and relearn. In this way, we will be able to face with dignity any challenges that will come along our way and still and will still emerge with, with hope and passion for education. So here are my references. So thank you so much for listening and God bless.